Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with our Blooming Catholic Life and we're here with our third look at this particular passage of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. We're at verses 27 and 28, our third look at them. So fruitful. I'm glad that you've joined me. So many of you have reached out this time. It's very exciting. Let's begin again as we always do with our prayer before the crucifix. Um, as St. Francis taught us. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Summe glorioso Deus, illumina tenebras cordis mehi, et da mihi fidem rectum, spem certin et caritatem perfectum, domini ut facium tuum sanctum et verax mandatum. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. It's always reading the prayers from the back of the book. Any notes go from the front towards the back. Just a little tip on using your journals if you created them with us. Um, we were crafting some of those the other day. So let's go ahead. We're going to read these verses several times. I'll pause in between, but feel free to pause your video for as long as you need to journal, draw, take notes, uh, whatever you need to do to help the scripture really come alive into your life today. And then we maybe we'll have a reflection to share. I'm so excited today. <laughs> Um, for the sons of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he will render to every man according to his works. Amen, I say to you, there are some of them that stand here that shall not taste death till they see the son of man come in his kingdom. For the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he will render to every man according to his works. Amen, I say to you, there are some of them that stand here that shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will render to every man according to his works. Amen, I say to you, there are some of them that stand here that shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And I'll tell you, this is the Feast of Candlemas when this when I'm making this video and when it's airing. Um, so really thinking about the light of Christ coming in his glory. Again, this passage happens right before the transfiguration. So it's such a great day. It just happened this way. Holy Spirit, thank you um, that we're on Candlemas contemplating um, events of Jesus, what Jesus said right before the transfiguration. And it's a great time to go ahead. Go ahead, friends. Maybe in a minute, we'll go ahead and look at that transfiguration, the light of Christ. Um, I, I know the other day, you know, I got so excited. I had the opportunity to go to Wednesday Mass, Wednesday Night Mass. And I was so excited when I made that video and just so convicted to go and give God glory. And it was so beautiful. You know, there's still just a little bit of the Christmas decoration still up because, of course, it was still Christmas tide or Epiphany tide, depending on on how your church calls it. Okay, so maybe it was still Epiphany Tide, but it's still Christmas. You know, Catholics still have their decorations up. They're kind of getting collected, like at the church. The point said is we're all out on the steps outside, but the Christmas trees were still lit. There wasn't much, there was a little, but that light was still shining. Such a beautiful reminder. It was such a beautiful time of adoration. Um, I had, I thought, anyway, well, hope a really good confession, some things I was really asking for some help with. And yeah, when you ask for those graces, friends, yeah, it was so exciting. So things have been going good there. I did also ask for help. You know, I kind of lingered. I said to the things, the things that were easier and I kind of lingered. And even though he's behind a screen, yeah, father can hear that in your voice. He's like, is there anything else? And so I'm like, I know it's not really a sin, but here's the thing, right? And he gave me such great advice. I really think he did. Uh, I'm hoping that that will bear fruit. I'm really trying to live that out as well as, you know, he gives you a penance. And sometimes you may feel that that penance is too easy. Maybe he's given you five Hail Marys. Okay, that doesn't mean you can't say more, but say those five Hail Marys, go out in adoration, say those five Hail Marys. Maybe you want to say it some more days or anytime you're tempted by that sin, maybe you could bring up that penance again. Oh, that's a really good idea. I've never heard a priest say that, but I don't think they would disagree with that. The penance he gave you that when you're tempted to do it again, turn, turn to that penance to strengthen you and ask God for those graces in that moment. You know, just saying the word help, you know, we learned that um, 
Oh, Father Spitzer's book. It's right there. Just out of my reach. What does it say? The five pillars of the spiritual life. And one of them is just even... It's, it's those spontaneous prayers that are just little short things that you just scream out. And one of them is just, help! <laughs> or just, God, give me all the graces I need for this moment. That can be enough. Um, there are many more beautiful ones that you can memorize. There are longer prayers. But it might be nice when you have that temptation. And in the moment, you may just cry out, Lord, give me all the graces I need to fight this temptation. But if you can remember the penance you were given whether it was penance or just something to help you on your journey, advice, it could have been advice, go and live, go go grab whatever that prayer was, whatever that was that you were supposed to do, go do it again. I bet it will strengthen you to fight that temptation. That is, I'm loving that Holy Spirit. You're very kind to us today. Um, I want to go ahead, I don't know about you, um, I just want to read a little bit about the transfiguration here. Okay, so it's in chapter 17. After six days, Jesus taketh unto him Peter and James and John his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. You love how they bring James and John. John, the little one, come with your big brother. Come on, you come along. Mentor those in the spiritual life. Go ahead. If there's someone a little bit further back on the journey than you, give them some advice every now and then. I'm sorry, my phone is ding dinging. I forgot to turn silence on. Lots of great things happening today. So I'm very excited to read that in a moment, but we'll let that go. Okay. And after six, oh, and after six days. So on the seventh day afterwards, Jesus went up and rested after six days. That's very interesting. And after six days, Jesus taketh unto him, Peter and James and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his garments became white as snow. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter answering said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make thee here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. And as he was yet speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And lo, the voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And the disciples, hearing, fell upon their faces and were very much afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said to them, Arise, and fear not. And lifting up their eyes, saw no one but only Jesus. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, till the Son of Man be raised from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, When do the scribes say that Elias must come? Well, why then do the scribes say that Elias must come first? But he, answering them, said to them, Elias indeed shall come and restore all things. But I say to you that Elias is already come, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they had a mind, and so also the Son of Man shall suffer from them. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them of John the Baptist. And when he was come to the multitude, there came to him a man falling down on his knees before him, saying, Lord, have pity on my son, for he is a lunatic and suffereth much, for he falleth often into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the devil went out of him, and the child was freed from, cured from that hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus secretly and said, why could not we cast him out? Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for amen I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove from hence thither, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. But this kind of thing is not cast out, but by prayer and fasting. And when they abode together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day shall rise again. And they were troubled exceedingly. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received the Didrachimus came to Peter and said to him, Does not your master pay the Didrachimus? And he said, Yes. And when he was coming into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What is thy opinion, Simon, the kings of earth of whom they shall receive tribute or custom of their own children or of strangers and he said of strangers jesus said to him then the children are free 
But they that it may not scandalize them go to the sea and cast in a hook. And that fish which shall come first up, take it. When thou hast opened its mouth, thou shalt find a stater. Take that and give it to them for me and for thee. Uh, the Didyrachimus was a half sickle or a half stater. That is about $15 English, I think that's what it says, which was a tax laid upon every head for the service of the temple. What a great reading, though, to have right before Lent begins. Go and read chapter, finish off chapter 16, read it again. Go ahead, read 17. Great, great reading as we begin Lent. Time of prayer and fasting. And notice how they stop and they give money for the upkeep of the temple. Do not forget in your almsgiving to give money to your parish. So many parishes are languishing right now, friends. Let's just have an honest moment here. A lot of us cut back on our giving because of certain policies and things that were coming down from very high up. Um, and we didn't like where the money was being spent. So a lot of people stopped giving. As well as the online giving is a beautiful, wonderful idea. It makes increases the safety of our parish as well as allows our pastors to plan and budget for the year. And it is a blessing in those ways. What is not a blessing, though, is we don't see the giving of others. It's done so much in secret that it's not encouraging others to give. So if you give to your parish, you may want to mention it to your friends every now and then. Um, they For a while, they gave out those little cards that you could put in the basket. And it felt like being a Pharisee, like, look, I'm still putting something in. Um, but maybe maybe we need to find some happy medium there so people can see, yes, we're supporting the church. Now, if your church is in some sort of bankruptcy thing and you're really leery, there may be a way, talk to your pastor or I don't know what your parish has, some kind of accountant or treasurer, um, and find out if there's a way that you can write on your check that it goes towards building maintenance or evangelization efforts. You may be able to write something on there, or there may be a fund that you can give to specifically that's going to stay in your parish that may already be set up at your parish. Um, so take the time to ask. Don't just freak out and not give. We need to give to the poor 100%. But we also do need to give to our parish. And our parish does often give to the poor. Don't make your parish choose between the new roof and giving to the poor. They're going to give to the poor, but that roof is going to suffer. And we do need to give glory to God. And we do need the parish building. It's If nothing else that you believe, it is a great place for people to gather and worship and just to have fellowship opportunities and we're going to lose that. We're going to lose our place to have our funerals. We don't want to lose our parishes as well as all the combining. Oh, friends, we need prayer, prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Don't forget to give to your parish. Volunteer at your parish. They may just need somebody to help out in the gardens. Don't just spontaneously do it. Again, check, check. there may be a group that meets and does that. It's another great opportunity for fellowship. Ask your parish what they need and what is the best way to give. It's a little bit more effort, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, let's do it. It's it's almost game time. We're just a little bit away. So start making your plans for Lent. Pick something that is sacrificial, still doable. And if you're doubting whether you should do it, read these passages again. Hey, maybe you need to go fishing and see if there's some fish with coins in them laying around. I highly doubt that's going to happen. But... But maybe your local food bank accepts donations of fish. I don't know. You're not going to know until you ask. Or if your parish is getting ready for fish fries, maybe it's time now that you can sign up to help in the kitchen, or to be a hostess out in the dining room. There's many ways to help out at these fish fries. So get out there and ask. And if you can't go to your parish physically, if you're homebound, you're in prison, you're in a nursing home, you can still pray for these events. And God will bless you for that. Oh, friends, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the good Lord bless you, my friend. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.